Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Hopefully this will be a quick video. You are looking at a Robinair Cooltech 34134Z. This is an air conditioning recycling machine. So this machine recovers R134 refrigerant. It filters it and it has the ability to evacuate the system completely with a vacuum pump and then recharge the system. It also has an oil injection and a few other fancy doodads. But the reason we've got it torn apart today is that it needs a vacuum pump. So this is the old vacuum pump. I've got it all torn apart. But uh, see all that sludge in the bottom? It's full of rust and all kinds of crusty, nasty stuff. So when I went to drain the oil out of the vacuum pump, first of all, it wouldn't even drain out. There was so much sludge in the bottom. So I, I took the fitting completely out and it just poured out rusty, sludgy, nasty stuff. And... When I filled it with oil and tried to run it, of course it wouldn't hardly pull a vacuum. And then all the oil ran out of the uh, the input shaft seal. So the shaft is rusty, the seal is bad, the, the vacuum pump is toast. So it's just a simple, super simple two-stage rotary pump. And it's just got these little reed valves and a couple little, little rotors. But uh, yeah, there's not really much we can do with this thing. The part number on the original vacuum pump is RA... 15425 and that's a 6 CFM vacuum pump designed specifically for the recycling machine. I called the distributor and a new one is available. It's about $700. But I got to poking around on eBay and I came across this 15600 mobile vacuum pump. So this is designed more for like residential or or uh, stationary applications. So this is the same pump, as far as I can tell, except that it has this fancy handle and it also has this valve here. So on the, on the recycling machine, this valve is actually blocked off. It, it's not needed because the machine has its own built-in solenoid that, that closes that, that line. So I don't see why we can't use this pump to replace the original pump and save ourselves a little bit of money. And, you know, basically have the same spec. I think this is going to be pretty easy. So underneath this blue handle, there's your start capacitor, or maybe it's a run capacitor, one of the two. And then these are the two leads, like one goes to the cord and one goes to the switch. So all I gotta do is clip these quick disconnect terminals off and pull that back through that grommet and then come out this access hole here. And then I'll crimp on the, the male quick disconnect terminals and it should plug right into our original cord. And then for all intents and purposes, it'll be a drop-in replacement. I think it looks pretty good. It has this longer a sight glass extension and drain tube extension. I transferred those from the old pump, the old fittings, and then I did have to drill one hole for the cover for the capacitor. Otherwise, I think it's it's pretty much good to go. Okay, it's in. Everything fit together just fine. See, it's even got the same foot as the old pump, except the, the old one was broken. So the brackets line up perfectly, and I think we can go ahead and uh, Try to pull a vacuum and see what it does. I let the pump run for 30 minutes and I'm not sure what, what atmospheric pressure is here, but it's got to be like 29 point something inches of mercury. So you see we're, we're right on a full vacuum, and I didn't hear any unusual noises, no leaks, and I've been letting it sit here for another 15 minutes, and we haven't had any decay, so I'm very happy with that. Believe it or not, that crusty old pump, it would actually pull a vacuum, but obviously if it's leaking all the oil out of the input shaft seal, you know, it's not going to last very long. So... Yeah, I'm gonna slam this thing back together and we'll we'll test it out. I guess I can give a little bit of a, a tour of this machine and explain how it's put together. So basically the AC recycling machine combines it combines your manifold gauge set, your vacuum pump, your recovery compressor, and a storage tank for the refrigerant. So this is the vacuum pump, that's what we just replaced. This is the internal holding tank right here. So it holds uh, 28 pounds or something like that. Anyway, it sits on top of an electric scale 
and that's how you determine how much refrigerant has been recovered and how much it's going to charge. So on the back side here you can see there's your manifold gauge set and then there's a set of solenoids down here that uh, basically turn on and off the various functions. There's a coalescing filter here and that should remove any oil from the refrigerant that you recover and then this filter here is for moisture and air that might be mixed with the refrigerant and then at the bottom here this little compressor that's what recovers the refrigerant and then in this unit it's also used to charge up the system now some some uh, recovery machines also have a tank heater and they can actually heat the tank up and and push the refrigerant in this way in that way uh, this one just uses this little compressor I want to test out my AC machine and I need a willing victim I just so happen to have this 2006 Ford F-250 and the AC is getting a little weak on it. I checked the vent temperature. It's closer to 60 degrees Fahrenheit and that's on a cool day. And I imagine when the ambient temperatures come up it's going to struggle to keep up. So most likely it just has a low charge. You know these old systems it's not unusual for them to lose 10% of their volume every year. And this truck's what 12 years old so it should be, it, it's very possible that it's low on refrigerant. So the tag says that it holds 2.84 pounds. So we'll recover the system and see, uh, see what that number ends up being. So I've got the AC machine hooked up to the truck. You can see it does have some pressure. It's 100 PSI. They should be the same on both sides. The actual number is basically meaningless. As long as there's some refrigerant in there, it should more or less match this chart right here. So, you know, 100 PSI, whatever, don't get too excited about that. So we're going to go ahead and, and recover. It says 11.62 pounds. That's the maximum amount that it, that's basically the empty space that it has in the tank. So it can recover up to 11.62 pounds. So we're going to open high side and low side and recover. Now this is going to take quite a while. I think it's pretty much done. We pulled both down to zero and I haven't seen the, the scale come up much. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, stop the recovery and then we'll watch the gauges and see if they come back up. Okay, so our gauges have stayed at zero. So I'm confident that all the refrigerant has been recovered from the system. If the gauges bounce back up, then you probably froze up during the recovery process and you need to let the system sit for a minute, thaw out, and then you can continue recovery back down to zero. But not a problem here. So we'll go ahead and drain the oil. Okay, so very little oil recovered from that. Maybe half an ounce. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull the system into a vacuum. Now, strictly speaking, we don't have to vacuum down the system because it's never been open. So as long as the system stays above atmospheric pressure, then there's no way for moisture or whatever to get into it. But we are gonna go ahead and vacuum it down anyway because it'll make the, re the recharge faster. And if there's any moisture that's been stored in the, in the oil, it should go ahead and boil that off. So it's just a good safety. We'll just do it for 15 or 20 minutes. We don't need to do the full 45 minutes, you know, that you would have to do if you've opened up the system. So 1.96 pounds has been recovered, you can see here. That means that the system's almost a pound low. So it holds 2.84, so we're what? Just short of 0.9 pounds low on refrigerant. And I did the math, that's 5% uh, of the system per year, if we figure 12 years. So in my opinion, that's an acceptable leak rate. You know, you're always gonna have some leak, especially on the compressor shaft seal. There's no such thing as a perfectly tight system. You know, maybe if it's brand new, but on an older vehicle, no way. So actually, the EPA does not oblige you to fix any leak in your AC system. You can have it leak as much as you want. You're not allowed to intentionally vent the system, but if it has a leak, you're not required to fix it unless it holds over 50 pounds of refrigerant, which no vehicle that I know of does. So we'll set it to vacuum for 15.
Okay, the system's in vacuum right now. We're gonna let it sit for a minute, make sure that it holds vacuum. I'm sure that it will. And then we'll go ahead and charge. As long as the system is in vacuum, I can actually inject oil directly from the machine. So most Fords use the low viscosity 46 oil. So it's PAG 46. And I'm using the stuff that has the UV dye in it. Looks like a Ninja Turtle slime. We're gonna charge the system at 2.82 pounds and I am gonna charge it via the high side. So if you're used to charging the system without one of these machines, you know, you always do it on the low side using the compressor to pull the refrigerant in. But this machine will actually force the, the refrigerant in without us having to start the truck up. So I like to charge on the high side because there's less chance that the liquid refrigerant could, could wash the oil out of the compressor. So here we go. And again, this will take quite a while. Okay, our charge is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and close the high side, and then I'm actually gonna disconnect the high side from the truck. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is start the truck up, and we're gonna open both valves, and we'll allow the low side to pull the refrigerant that's in the hoses into the system as much as possible. step is we got to recover the refrigerant that's in the hoses. Okay, so you see it drained 0 0.04 pounds out of the hoses, so that's basically nothing, but we don't want to leave it there. So we're done. Okay, you can see our vent temperature, so it's just about 42 or so. Anytime you can get the vent temperature within, you know, 40 to 50 degrees, that's that's usually good enough. And yeah, 40 degrees is pretty good for an old truck like this. So, feels pretty good in here. Right, kiddo? Well, I would call that a success. The machine seems to work just fine. And, you know, there's really nothing to these machines. You know, it looks like this crazy complicated thing from the outside, but internally there's really only, you know, what, four or five components. And as far as I know, especially with the Robin Air units, they haven't really changed any of these internal components for a long time. The filters, the pumps, the compressors, they're the same going back, even back into the old square bodied machines. So this is a 2005 machine. I would absolutely not be afraid to buy an old one. You know, there's really just not that much that goes wrong with them. The vacuum pump is the weak link. And I would say the big thing as far as the, the sludge that you saw on the compressor, or the, the vacuum pump is to make sure that you change the oil regularly. The service interval on the on the vacuum pump oil is 10 hours. And actually for the portable pumps they recommend changing the oil after every use. That's more for the stationary HVAC guys who are doing you know very large systems. Uh, the other thing I would say is make sure to change the oil before you put the machine away for winter. You know where I'm at there's really no there is no AC work after you know September just it's a pretty short season as far as you know the actual AC repairs go. Nobody ever has the forethought to fix it when they don't need it. So the only difference between this machine and the newer ones is the newer ones have a more sophisticated computer system. They, they don't have these uh, panel valves and stuff. They do everything with, with solenoids that are controlled by the computer. And so they can do the things that I have to do manually can be done automatically. They can automatically equalize the hoses. They can automatically stop the recovery process when the, when the pressure drops to zero. They can automatically restart if the pressure rises back above zero. So, you know, a lot more sophisticated. This machine is very basic, but it does everything that I need to do. Uh, so if you're a mechanic, you know, you really need to be able to do AC work. You know, air conditioning systems require some maintenance, and it can be a good money maker. From my experience, you know, with industrial equipment, tractors and whatever, excavators, bulldozers and stuff, 
the people that own those machines, they could care less if it's leaking oil or the bushings are all worn out or the wheel bearings are bad. If the air conditioning system stops working, they can't last two minutes. You know, they're, they're going to be in the shop screaming for somebody to fix it. So, you know, in that regard, AC work can be very profitable. And, you know, I'm, I'm generally in favor of DIY type stuff, but in my opinion, air conditioning work is not a DIY project. You know, it's not like the old days of R12 where you just squirt a little bit more into the system and, you know, wait for the site glass to run clear. With R134A, too much refrigerant is just as bad as too little. And, you know, if you just put the, you know, the little two pound can that you buy at the auto parts store, you know, if you just dump that into your system, you could easily cause it to become overcharged. And the EPA, you know, has really cracked down on people venting refrigerant. And if you want to work on air conditioning systems for hire, you have to be EPA 609 certified, uh, which I am. It's pretty easy to get certified, but you do have to go through the process. And also, you know, the fines for intentionally venting any kind of refrigerant are, are very high. So EPA fines start at $37,500 per incident. And even worse than that, if someone turns you in for intentionally venting a, you know, refrigerant into the atmosphere, the EPA will actually pay them a $10,000 reward. So you absolutely do not want to do that. Now, like I said, you're not under any obligation to fix a leak in an air conditioning system, but you are obligated not to intentionally vent the refrigerant into the atmosphere. So. You know, say what you want about that. Those are the rules, and we all have to follow them. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. So I know, you know, my videos tend to be sort of all over the place, and uh, this one was no exception.